Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new season of the Purposeful Life Show with your host, Adrian Starks. I'm excited to share some new updates of the show with you, starting with a new look, sound, and energy, as well as a variety of guests coming aboard with intriguing topics of conversation. I hope you enjoy the new level of energy that will be brought to the show. Thank you for all of your support since the very beginning in 2019. Wow, it's been three years already? (laughs) Because of you, the Purposeful Life Show is now in the top 5% of all podcasts globally, and we aim to get it into the top 1%. Continue listening to the show and share it with others. You can also now listen to the show on my Facebook page at Adrian Starks, where you can comment in real time and communicate with me about your aha moments. Thank you again for all of your support. And let's make this one hell of a year and be purposeful about doing that. Wishing you all much love and success. We kind of work really hard on business, then we let it all slide, and then we do a short-term like cleanse or fix, and we're working <laughs> so hard just to have to like redo it six months later because we let it slip or it wasn't sustainable, right? Most of that stuff just isn't enjoyable enough to be practical as a business owner and keep mm-hmm. up every day. So yeah, I I think getting people to find that sweet spot so that they can just enjoy food and run their business and actually feel good again is just such a <laughs> sweet spot for sure. Welcome to the Purposeful Life Show on the Connect Now podcast with your host, Adrian Starks. If you're looking for the ideas that could be your breakthrough for change in your business, career, or personal life, then this podcast is for you. Join Adrian as he speaks on topics of personal and professional development for the person behind the business and interviews a variety of entrepreneurs, business owners, and thought leaders to reveal their ideas and solutions to success and its challenges. Subscribe to the show and leave us a review. It's time to connect, learn, and grow. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Purposeful Live Show and the Connect Now podcast with your host, Adrian Starks. And I'm excited to have you back for yet again another amazing and uplifting episode. Today, I have a special guest on, and her name is Michelle Shepard. I've got so much to say about her before we get started. But before we do that, let me go ahead and just tell you this. Go ahead and download this podcast into your favorite podcast platform and subscribe to the show. Leave us a review. We'd love to know how we are doing. Let's get into this guest that we have today, Michelle Shepard. Michelle is a registered dietitian and on a mission to create positive, healthy relationships with food. Hmm. She developed West Coast Nutrition to help people feel amazing in their own skin. Michelle focuses on helping men and women find what works for their bodies while still enjoying life and building a positive relationship to food and body while they're at it. And she is a believer that there is no one perfect approach. Ooh, I love that one. She works with many business owners and completely gets it how hard it can be to balance self-care with food and lifestyle amongst a million things on their to-do list. And I know all about that to-do list. By focusing on small steps, sustainable change, and realistic eating strategies, it can get business owners their energy, wellness, and healthy bodies back. Whoa. Okay. Michelle, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much, Adrian. I am thrilled to be here. This is some of my favorite stuff to talk about. Well, I'm excited to talk to you about it because this whole idea of a healthy lifestyle is so intriguing because we are living in a culture right now where people are confused, Michelle, about what's healthy, what's not healthy. And they are making all these mistakes, which they could avoid if they went about it a certain way. Absolutely. Yeah. And I I find people are actually working harder than they need to most of the time. So they're doing these really big extreme things. And I think especially as business owners, we kind of work really hard on business, then we let it all slide. And then we do a short term like cleanse or fix. And we're working <laughs> so hard just to have to like redo it six months later because we let it slip or it wasn't sustainable, right? Most of that stuff just isn't enjoyable enough to be practical as a business owner and keep mm-hmm. up every day. So yeah, I, I think getting people to find that sweet spot so that they can just enjoy food and run their business and actually feel good again is just such a <laughs> sweet spot for sure. Well, let's get into that sweet spot here because I love to get to know 
exactly the person behind the business. Because Michelle, I know that you're a specialist in nutrition and we're going to talk all about this today. But I also like to know who is Michelle? How does she show up on this show? And why is she doing what she does? So Michelle, you're a clinical dietitian, nutrition specialist, and you created West Coast Nutrition to help people feel amazing in their own skin. I love that. But how did you decide to do this? I mean, when did this journey start? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I, I always wish I had this like really amazing origin story, but I was a you know reasonably smart kid who took a year off because I didn't know what I wanted to do and um, knew I wanted like a nice schedule and mm-hmm. I liked health. And so I'm dating myself a little bit, but I flipped through the paper UBC program guide back when they did that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I saw dietetics and I'm like, that looks interesting. And I just went for it. I didn't even really know what a dietitian did. I didn't know what kind of jobs (laughs) they had. I just like I jumped in. um, And most dietitians are in, you know, hospital. Um, I worked in cancer care for over a decade. Um, And so I I was able to spend a lot of time in those traditional places and also get really passionate about helping people earlier on. Mm -hmm. Right. So trying to get ahead of getting sick. And also, I think having a little bit of room to be just a bit more progressive, right? There's so much we Mm -hmm. know about nutrition and all, you know, all things move slowly when you're in really big groups. And so I started my private practice on the side years ago. And Mm. then the last couple of years kind of went, you know what, like people need this. And I just jumped in with both feet. Um, So it's been amazing to be able to take all of that experience and then kind of funnel it in a different way Mm. so that we can like avoid getting sick or slow it down as opposed to wait to treat people until they already feel really crappy, right? Like if for me, yeah. that's just such a backwards um, approach, right? And there's lots of reasons that it is that way. But I get really excited when people come in and I go, oh, we can, we can make this better now mm-hmm. as opposed to then. Wonderful story. I just love that. And there's always something about the story of people. And this is what I'm so intrigued by, Michelle. This is why we talk about the person behind the business here. There's always something that gets that person to a level in their life where they say, I want to change this, and I also want to help others change that. So did you ever face any challenges with health in your life? That's a fantastic question. Um, And as much as I'm a dietitian, I did. So I was, you know, eating reasonably, but I went through a period um, where I was working really hard and full-time, like a clinical work, you know, with cancer care. And I was also trying to run my business, and I was going through some really big life stuff. So, like divorce, moving, all the things, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I was working like eighty hours a week. I was getting, you know, four or five hours of sleep a night. Um, wow. And let me tell you, no amount of salad will offset that kind of <laughs> just like body pressure, right? And life stress. And at that time in my life, I really didn't have the tools to like cope with all of those things in the way that I've kind of cultivated over the last mm. you know, eight or 10 years. And so I, um, I ended up having recurring gut issues. It was actually something most of my clients come to me with. And it was like the pain was like 10 out of 10. There was a few times I'd like turn around and go home on the way to work. Mm-hmm. And I, they would just come out of nowhere and I'd go see my doctor and he's like, there's nothing wrong with you. Like, mm. like we've done all the tests, like you're you're fine. And he's a, he was a lovely gentleman. And he sat me down and he went, Michelle, I think you're stressed. And I was like, mm-hmm. excuse me, there's no reason I am like bending over in pain because of stress. Like I'm fine. I can do this. I'm used to working. And he was like, like, just consider it, right? Like, what if you take a few weeks and just like scale it back and then see what happens? Um, and I like a good experiment. And if I'm being mm. totally honest, I was sure I was going to prove him wrong. Um, <laughs> But so I did. So I scaled back a little bit. I slept a little bit more. Um, I went to therapy, like for, you know, stress management and things like that, which is life changing if you haven't been. Mm-hmm. Um, and the gut issue started to go away. So I had some nutrition work to do, too, because I'd given them a pretty big mm-hmm. run for their money as far as, you know, challenges. But when I had time to eat well and I could slow down and I got enough sleep and I started putting together some of the research I was doing on the nutrition piece around gut, they went away. Mm. Um, And so for me, that was one of those moments where I went like, oh, like sometimes because we often see those patients, you know, in healthcare where we're like, we don't know what's wrong with you. Like this is in your head. Right. And I went, no, this is real. Right. And so one of the things I took away is that we have to treat people as a whole person. Right. So if Mm. we had just looked at my gut or my pain, like there was nothing there. But when I added sleep and self-care and stress management and an appropriate schedule, which wasn't 80 hours a week every week. (laughs) Like my body healed itself. And that was just eye-opening to me because that's not something we um, 
as traditional healthcare, you know, professionals that we yeah. learn in school, right? We learn about the power of nutrition, but in very focused, very narrow ways. And so to see all that come together, and then I, of course, because I love research, spent months going down a rabbit hole of like <laughs> mind body research and gut brain access research. And I was like, wow, like this is really cool. And also, we're not helping people if we're just doing this teeny little piece. So one of the things I do now, whether my clients like it or not, is we spend a lot of time on self-care, on stress mm. management. And we also fill in with that physical body, you know, care as far as like exercise and food and supplements. Um, but they don't get away with missing this one because I experienced how important it is to that healing process. Beautiful. And I love your approach to treating the whole person. Yeah. That is right? so important. Why do you think it's important for people to start taking their health more seriously and even taking a different approach to health? Yeah. I, oh, that's a, a fantastic question. Um, I love what I do in a lot of ways, but one of the reasons I'm most passionate about it, even though I love the short-term progress clients, see, like I love energy and I love close fitting and all of that stuff. Um, but having spent a long time in traditional healthcare, like I saw people who didn't do terribly, but who put it off too long, right? And then mm -hmm. got diabetes and then have all these complications and who like saved up for their retirement, but are spending every week in like doctor's offices and on medications. And even for myself, I kind of look at that stuff and I go like, that's not what I wanted mm -hmm. for my life, right? Like I want yeah. to travel and experience the world and yes. you know, meet grandkids and actually like live a really full life. Cause that's the promise we're sold. I think about retirement is that it's going to be this like glorious golden years, but the way our culture kind of approaches, you know, food and lifestyle and body leading up to that is you just burn it out mm -hmm. so you can get to that marker, but then you can't enjoy it, right? You're sick and you're tired and you're struggling. Um, and I see lots of women who, you know, they hit 50 and they hate their bodies and like they mm -hmm. look back and they've spent 40, 35 years spending so much energy on that stuff. So feeling physically bad, but also just beating themselves up unnecessarily. And they go, mm -hmm. I wish I didn't do that. Right. Um, and so it sounds a little morbid, but other people's regrets, um, it gave me a lot of perspective as a really young woman, like in some really serious areas like diabetes and cancer, I kind of went like, oh, this is some perspective, right? Like my genes matter, yeah, but like that matters more. Like that's why I do what I do. Um, and I think we, we do, we, we really push burnout as a, a culture and you just go all in all the time until you can't anymore. And then we expect your body's going to be there waiting at the finish line and it's not. Right. It is Ooh, a, is I think of it more as a yeah. car that you've got to maintain. So if you keep it running, yeah. like, yeah, you can drive for a long time. You can drive really fast. But if you just run out of oil and you don't fill up the gas and you never go for maintenance, you're not going to make it very far. And that car is going to burn out. And we don't remember that with our bodies. Um, so my job is to help clients kind of do that in a way that also fits in the fact that we are North American. I have a lot of business owners. I am mm -hmm. one. And we are busy. Right. So like, yeah. I can't say that I don't ever work like a 60 to 80 hour work week. I don't do it all the time now. But that's the reality sometimes for some of us. And so learning to find that kind of flexible balance, you know, as time moves on, gives you that freedom so that you can actually kind of approach food and body in a way that gives you that like amazing life when you're ready to have it and you get out of this like kind of hustle and grind stage that a lot of us are in to to get things rolling. I love that. And I love your approach about talking or comparing the body to a vehicle, because it really is. It's the thing that's going to take us across the finish line to our success. We can't use any other machine. We can't borrow anyone else's body. That's for sure. So this yeah, idea of focusing on that, yes, on that one. And let's get back to the culture of exhaustion, because we are living in a culture where it's push, push, go, go, grind this out. And then when you approach what you do, or you get that result, then you can take care of yourself. And that's not going to work. Absolutely. Let's talk about losing weight in society. Is it more important to lose weight or is it more important to feel good in your own skin? Oh, that's a great question. And I will say, I don't think it's as cut and dry as you sometimes see on the internet, right? So there's people in both camps who go like that number is the absolute health marker and we should be doing everything. And then there's people who go, the number doesn't matter. Right. So right. whatever. <laughs> and it's in the middle. And so I think the absolute most important thing for me is you feel good in your skin. 
One, because you cannot sustain a diet change if you're doing it out of shame or fear. Like we know from behavior research, those aren't effective long-term motivators. And so we do them, Mm -hmm. but of course they fall down because they're terrible. Like our brains really hate that (laughs) long-term. And your body is also there's a really wide range of what a healthy weight looks like. And I'm not talking about BMI. BMI was never meant to be an individual marker of health. It's like a population research tool. But what we go for is a body where my clients feel good. So Mm -hmm. there might be some aesthetic to that because we're human and that matters, but their energy comes up. Their mood is stable. Like their skin glows. Like there's, your body will tell you how you're doing. Um, And that for me is the ultimate arbitrator. So lots of my clients come because they would like to lose weight, but it's really important. We don't focus on that so much. We lose like the forest for the trees, right? Like if you feel crappy and you're at a lower weight, you're not healthier, Hmm. right? And I have lots of lean clients who come for other things. Like they're a terrible shape, even though they fit that, that ideal. And so your body feeling really good in your skin. And I think just acceptance that your body is what it is, right? Like I am I'm short and I'm muscly on the bottom. Like that is just, it is who I am. And at 37 years old, I have accepted that that is it. Like I'm just not going to be long-legged and skinny. And that's not my, who, I, who my body was made to be. And so I think that relationship piece has to come before any real like physical goal. And I think it one, it puts that goal in perspective of how important it is. And two, if there is some, you know, progress to be made, like if you're out of weight, that's really unhealthy for your body and you'll feel that, right? Like your joints hurt and you can't do your activities and your energy is crap. Then you can do that from a place of like love and care and sustainable, you know, change in relationship as opposed to that, just like punish it until it fits the look that you want. And then be really surprised when you can't sustain that, you know, long-term. I like that. The relationship with the body And so what you're saying is that we develop this relationship first, accept where we are, but we don't have to accept that this is all there is. I think there's some people out there like, they're like, well, this is just who I am. This is just my body. And this is, I'm just going to accept this. And what you're saying is, yes, you can accept that, but you still can improve. Am I correct on that? (laughs) Absolutely. And I think, yeah, and the improvement should be driven. um, I'm big in patient-centered care, right? So if you're super happy with how your body looks and you feel really good, then total acceptance, like you roll, Mm -hmm. right? Um, But if you learn to accept it, and also you're like, hey, I don't feel great, right? Those Mm -hmm. are things we can improve on. And I think for most of us, there's also places with that long term health perspective we talked about, that we can do better, right? So we can kind of body is what the body is. But we know there's lots we can do to prevent diabetes or put Mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease in like remission and all of those things. And so knowing that we can often improve and that it's worthwhile. It's Mm -hmm. really important. And I think the other piece there is sometimes clients, they don't always accept their body. So sometimes they, it's under the guise of that, but they go, oh, I'm just, I'm just addicted to sugar. Like that's just who I am. I'm Mm -hmm. always going to be this way. And so they committed to a lifetime of on and off that diet roller coaster because they go, this is the only thing that works for me. And my argument is always, if it worked for you, you wouldn't have to do it again and again, Mm -hmm. right? Like you shouldn't have to repeat that if it's actually working and that behaviors are not set in stone, right? Like we train dogs, we train horses, we put humans through therapy. Like how we eat is not a, it's not a thing you're born with. It's a thing we're taught. Mm -hmm. Um, And our brain chemistry and our culture and our history involves in that. But I think that, yeah, accepting who you are and what your body shape is and also knowing that you can undo a lot of the damaging stuff you might do with food Mm -hmm. with the like great support and time and, care for your Mm. body as well. Powerful. This is why you're on the show, Michelle, because you have so (laughs) much information here. We're just breaking the surface. Let's go to the next question. I think is a big one. What does it mean to have a healthy body? Oh, that's a great question. For me, this is a body you feel good in. Um, okay. And so something where you don't feel limited, so you can go and if you want to play soccer or hike or whatever, your, you know, idea of function looks like, I think function is really specific to what you, you enjoy doing and what really mm-hmm. fills your cup. If you can comfortably go do those things and you feel really good doing them, if your energy and mood are good, you know, aside from sleepless nights and, you know, tax time, if you feel that kind of internal wellness and you are able to do things you want to do, for me, that's a healthy body. I've mm-hmm. got clients on a huge spectrum of what that might 
look like, you mm -hmm. know, externally, but we trust their cues. The other things I look for that people always squirm a little bit, um, so I'll preface it, is gut health is a really big piece. So we're learning, the last decade we've had a lot of research on it, but I have to say my guys especially, mm -hmm. they won't check off digestive issues when they come in, but I ask because I'm a good practitioner. And so like if you're having bloating or issues with bowel movements or like discomfort, like that's not normal. And our gut's a really big arbiter of our inflammatory, our stress response, of a lot of our repair systems. And so we need that like internal piece to be working really well too. And so we want that kind of feeling of like, I always think of it as like wellness from the inside out, right? Yes. Like we don't just put on creams or take pills. Like we've got to heal the internal systems. And so, but you know, when that happens, because you feel good and things kind of move and you have a little bit of freedom to like go away for the weekend and you don't feel like crap on Monday, right? Your body is resilient <laughs> in that wellness. This is the other piece. Um, so yeah, feeling good, doing the things you want to do comfortably, mm -hmm. um, as much as they're still hard. Like I love to strength train and still kicks my butt. <laughs> um, but also knowing that like everything is kind of working the way it should consistently. Love it. What my understanding is right now is the culture around carbs, fats, and calories is not a good culture. People are afraid of it. What is your take on that culture? Oh, that's a great question. And I think in all three of those areas, as much as they intermingle, the problem is there's extremists, right? And those might be healthcare mm. professionals. Those are often just people on the internet who like something has worked for them. And so they evangelize it as the answer. And the problem is, is that we did low fat for a very long time, right? And that's built into some of our like health system, you know, approach. If you look at some of the guidance mm -hmm. and low carb, there's been a lot of research on for very specific things like diabetes, but it's been evangelized, you know, on the internet and calories we've long been afraid to eat. Um, and I see that in my women particularly. And I know like even in, when I was a teenager, like reading Cosmo, it'd be like, here's 25 ways to cut calories. And so we've become <laughs> afraid of food in general, right? Um, and the culture of that leaves people afraid to eat. It also leaves them kind of in what I call like a binge restrict cycle because we're so afraid. The fear is such a short-term motivator, which like I know you as a, a person who helps people <laughs> through this thing like get, right? We like get really strict and we get really afraid and we don't eat any of the things because we're worried we'll gain weight or we'll get our heart disease or whatever your, your yeah. personal fear is. But because you can't sustain that, then you fall on your face, right? Mm -hmm. And that face plant is usually going through bags of chips or like as soon as you go away on the weekend, just like burning through all the food. And so you put your body through this just like brutal yo-yo, mm -hmm. um, which is actually more harmful than just like finding a middle ground and like enjoying some delicious foods and also some healthy foods. But that <laughs> culture of just fear has damaged our relationship with food, um, not irreparably, because there's people like me who are like, we'll force you to get food <laughs> to the other side. Uh, but it has meant that we are a really weird culture of eaters. Like if you look at North Americans, we eat quickly. We also are on diets all the time. We have the highest consumption of like what I would consider like junk food, you know, it's just things that are more calorie dense, like processed foods. Mm -hmm. And so if you like, we're both on the most diets and we're eating the most crap, like what a weird weird culture right but it's because <laughs> that relationship has been so skewed by a fear-based approach and the reality is that they're all just nutrients right we use them in our body mm. they're, the balance of which might be different for person to person but we're taking that kind of evangelical approach to like nutrition and forgetting that whole person mm. in the middle right that we have to just find what works for you i love that you just said that all those three categories are actually nutrition they're not the big monsters that we thought they were Yes. Yeah. Well, Michelle, this has been absolutely wonderful. So much valuable information here. And we're just halfway through the show. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on a short break here. And when we get back, we're going to talk with the amazing Michelle Shepard on some more about the nutrition and how this will impact a successful lifestyle. We'll be right back. What if it were possible to get local fresh groceries delivered right to your front door? Just think how much time and stress it would save you. Well, Instacart gives you unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forget that one ingredient for the family dinner that could offset everything. Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as little as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area to help you save money, and every item is hand-selected by shoppers based on your preferences. No more rock-hard avocados, and they will keep your eggs safe too. To start your 14-day free trial, Follow the link in the show notes to let Instacart know that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, 
Never step foot in a grocery store again. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back to the second segment of this podcast. And we are with the wonderful Michelle Shepard. And we're talking about nutrition here, guys. We just had this discussion about calories, carbs, and fat. And Michelle just blew my mind. She said, hey, those are all nutritional things. And it made me think differently. And I hope it did for you, too. Michelle, are you still there? Hopefully you are, my friend, because we need to talk some more. (laughs) I am absolutely still here. And I am pumped to keep chatting. Well, let's do this. Let's get right into the second segment here. We're going to talk about success now because for our busy business owners out there and entrepreneurs, you're probably all thinking, okay, this is great. We talked about nutrition and a healthy lifestyle, but what does this actually do for me? And we knew you were going to ask that. So the next segment here, we're going to talk about the success factor. My question for you, Michelle, is can success be associated with having a healthier lifestyle? Oh, I love that question. And Like, absolutely. So I am super passionate about this because I'm a business owner, right? So I get it. Like, it's hard sometimes. Um, And I see a lot of business owners. um, Like my, I have this really large just raft of like accountant clients right now. And so like January through May, like their lives are insane. And the difference is the ones who were able to work with them before that hit. And we had some really good habits and routines and lifestyles. Like it was hard and they weren't perfect, but they felt better. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think the piece of, of a healthy body that sometimes as business owners, we forget is that as we chatted about earlier, like if you don't maintain the car, it's not going to keep serving you. Right. It's not going to keep driving. Yes. And as a business owner, you need it to. Right. Like nobody pays our sick time. Nobody gives us days off, you know, unless you're you're much better established than maybe I am. But <laughs> having that that longevity, that sustainability of like energy and focus and just feeling well is really important. To success. And I know for myself, when I'm really doing a good job of taking care of my physical body, I'm more productive. I'm more focused. I'm not as mm. foggy. I get more done, right? I get more done in less time. And for me, I think most business owners, like that's the ultimate goal, right? Is like, get can more I done. get enough done to go home <laughs> and enjoy dinner, you know, with my family. And so I think really remembering that your body serves your brain um, and our brain is like our primary tool, no matter whether we're service or product based. And that we need to maintain it, right? It will not wait for you for six months and then still be at the end, just like ready to enjoy life. We've got to keep up that that little bit of give, that little bit of TLC during our worst times in order to get that longevity out of our focus and our business. The body serves the brain. That is important for us to know because I think that most often we just assume our bodies are just these things that just it summons up its own energy and we just have it <laughs> and yeah, we just, just keep, yeah. we just keep going and it's just kind of like the energizer bunny just goes and goes and goes and goes and it will never stop and what happens is there's that that moment where we just hit that exhaustion threshold yeah. and we don't know yeah. what to do because so many business owners I can attest to this we're rushing we're serving people we're trying to be out there everywhere at once because We have to. That's how our business, that's how we have, that's how we push our business. But at the same time, what you're saying is that by feeling good, slowing it down, taking care of our bodies internally, that will serve our brain better Mm -hmm. and that we will be able to be more productive, which sounds for a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners listening right now, wait a minute, slow down. Yes, we said slow down and pay attention to what you are doing with your body. And this is why I think success is such a a huge topic of conversation and healthy lifestyles, which you are implementing, Michelle, is being missed so much. And that's why I'm so excited to talk to you today about this. Love it. Absolutely. What is one of the main problems or one of the problems that you find with the busy lifestyle of business owners and entrepreneurs? Oh, that's a great question. Um, with my business owners, my entrepreneurs, one of the kind of biggest barriers I see like to to not maintaining that physical body and that health and longevity is that they 
they just kind of think it will come together, right? So mm-hmm. most of our intentions is like, we're none of us wake up or like, I'm going to abuse my body today. Like, that's not a thing that we think, but we're not organized and work mm-hmm. always takes precedence and there's always a fire to put out. And so they're kind of leaving the, the prep work of what you need to eat well and exercise and all of that, just hoping it'll happen, right? Mm-hmm. In a way that you don't do with your business. Like none of us just walk into our business and go, oh, this will work out. I'll just show up later. And we do that with food and exercise and, you know, emotional health and things like that. And so with those clients, their lack of organization in the the area of wellness is what kicks their butt, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not that they're, they're smart. They are, most of us are super organized. Like we've got the skill set, but we don't apply it to how we care for our body. And then we just burn out as the week goes on because nothing is in place to support us. You know, it's interesting. It reminds me of this book by Leo Tolstoy. He's a Russian novelist. Love his literature. And it's a book called How Much Land Can a Man Have or a Man Own? It talks about this person trying to get as much land as he could. And through this process, he was able to maintain all the land, but he died at the end because of full on out exhaustion. Now, for our business owners and entrepreneurs, Adrian is not saying that you're going to die. (laughs) So please don't run away from this podcast and say, this guy's crazy. I'm not listening to him anymore. It's just a reference. What I'm saying is that according to this book, we will always hit our exhaustion threshold where we will just fall. And at that point, you have to find ways or know ways of getting that help. And this is why Michelle is so great and magnificent at what she does. And you can easily say, okay, well, you know, Michelle, I've got this. I got, I know about nutrition. I know all of these things. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. You need to have someone in your corner that can help you identify those bad habits that you're going to go back to when you get busy. And as yeah. business owners and entrepreneurs, we all know we have those habits. You can't say you don't. Absolutely. What can they do or what can we do, Michelle? to start turning those habits around to more productive habits? Oh, great, great question. Um, I think there's two things I always work on with my business owners, amongst other things, but it's particularly the ones who, like you said, kind of know what they should do, but just struggle to do it because of busy and, you know, life. And so the first one, and everyone cringes because most of us don't want another thing to plan, but bear with me is to start doing some meal planning. So that like weekly, like sacrosanct, like this gets done and not a big, like you don't need to plan 21 freezer meals and have them ready to go, but you need to know kind of what you're going to eat, have the groceries in the house. And then if you want to prep, you can, but lots of my clients don't, but enough organization that come like Wednesday night at six o'clock after you've put out fires all day, you're not left wondering what's for dinner. Mm-hmm. nobody makes good decisions in that mode. Your brain is burnt out. Your physical energy is depleted. You're going to go convenient, easy, comforting most of the time, right? Mm-hmm. And so getting that little bit of planning done, and that looks different. I have some clients who are super like all the details, specific recipes, like ready to go. And other clients who go like, we're going to have chicken and one of these bags of frozen veggies, but they're in the <laughs> house and they know that's what they're doing. That piece takes off a lot of that like end of day decision making that we just do not have the bandwidth okay. to do. And it also keeps you from falling into those sort of convenient decisions where you just order pizza again, because you're tired. You're like, oh, I'll do this tomorrow. But you don't, because you're also tired tomorrow. So getting that planning done um, and finding a style of planning and prep that works for you is probably like the number one thing if you're busy. So it sounds like an added to do, but it takes a ton of energy back for you during the week. And then you also don't argue with your spouse about what's for dinner every day. We've all done that and been there and <laughs> yes. it's just the worst, right? We all end up annoyed and hungry and just eating random things. And the the kind of second thing, and you touched on this a little bit, is if we don't, one, if we're not eating well, and two, we are not cultivating some of the non-food self-care, mm-hmm. we eat for comfort, right? We're tired at the end of the day, we're still doing emails and you like, grab the popcorn or the chips, or you'd go through a drive through on the way home, which are really understandable responses to being <laughs> overwhelmed. Food gives our brain a bump in happy hormones. Like it does. <laughs> and it's like not the best way to get that bump, right? Like that mm-hmm. is the thing that catches us long term. So as much as we work on the what to eat with clients, the other thing I always have them focus on if they're doing that kind of convenient comfort, like stressy eating thing that as North Americans we're really prone to is to start cultivating other ways to fill that need. So when you hit, like when that craving hits, to recognize it for what it is, which is just your brain looking for a little something to feel good and 
finding other things that start to fill that cup. And what we do there is we actually start to make new pathways in your brain, which is really cool, but it's really hard up front because food is easy and it's comforting. And that pathway is paved in gold, right? Like we've run it many times. <laughs> and so that like for some of my clients, that is just taking a break. Like I know if I get snacky afternoon, it's just, I've been working too long, right? I just mm-hmm. need to like get up. Um, it might be poking your head outside. For some clients, it's like a meditation app. I have wave sounds with the Calm app that I'll like put on and feel really fed. That's a good one. Um, and it can be bigger things, right? So it could be a walk or exercise or like chatting with a friend, but something else that gives you that bump so that your brain can learn food is not the only outlet because as a business owner, your stress is not going away, which is why I learned anything over the last two years of like really diving into my business is like, it comes in waves of intensity, but man, is there always another wave coming? And so I cannot rely on it going away for the time I fix it. Right? Stress We've got is to rude. That gap now. Stress oh, is rude. rude. <laughs> it doesn't give you a notification on your no. phone, anything. It just shows up all of a sudden. <laughs> Yeah, and often at the most inopportune times, right? My um, my website got hacked with inappropriate ads during like the middle of the pandemic when I was trying to pivot and like serve my clients online and that I just thought stress, <laughs> this is unfair. Like, please do not do this to me. But yeah, like that happens as a business owner. This is amazing. And the information you just provided will help a lot of people. I'm hoping that the audience, you're writing this down because this is so valuable to you and it can actually change your lifestyle. What do they get or gain out of doing this, Michelle? They write these things down. What are, what are they going to see when they do Ooh, this? That's, love, love that question. Um, I think there's two things. So okay. the physical benefits will make working easier. And that's something I know for myself. And to be clear, I'm not perfect. Like I'm a very human dietitian. I enjoy wine. Sometimes I stress eat. Like I'm not, (laughs) you know, a model of of all the time. But I think that energy, especially sustained throughout the day. So avoiding that crash is really, really important. So on a very short term, like very acute level, Mm -hmm. if you can work better, you work less. And work is also easier, which Ooh, is a really okay. big win for me at the stage where like like most of us, we're, we don't want to hustle forever, right? Like we really want to <laughs> enjoy the fruits of our labor a little bit. And so being able to have energy and focus is like the shortest term one, um, as well as if you have those other goals around health or aesthetics, like that will come with right. time. So if that's feeling really important and you're feeling uncomfortable in your body and your skin, It is worthwhile to start working on that because you also get that mental energy back. So the amount of energy we spend thinking about how unhappy we are with our bodies or energy or our gut and stressing about it and going down internet rabbit holes without ever actually just getting it fixed Mm -hmm. is immense. Like my clients spend so much time thinking about it and researching and listening to like Aunt Diane's, you know, diet ideas. And so (laughs) you get that physical back where you feel really good and you get more done and you also get that mental energy back where you have it to spend on your business or your family or whatever it is you would like to spend it on that's not obsessing Mm. about what to eat all of the time and that piece I think as much as the physical part like obviously that's why I'm here that mental energy is huge right so sometimes when we do those exit strategies or surveys that's the thing they're like like I didn't know how hard that part was for me until I stopped doing it Right, until I was just comfortable with how I ate, like, oh my God, I have so much left, left over for <laughs> everyone around me. And I think that's such a huge piece we don't think about. Such a huge piece. Oh my. So this is interesting. And I am sure that a lot of us right now are probably just blown away and thinking, okay, I got to make some changes. I have to start adjusting how I'm eating and taking care of my body. This is great. Michelle, I want to know about you a little bit more. And I know you gave us some ideas in the very beginning about your story, but I want to know what do you eat and what do you do for fun? Oh, yeah, those are great questions. Um, I will say I'm a very, as a dietitian, I'm pretty what I call like agnostic. Like there's no one thing I do with Mm -hmm. clients. It really depends on their preferences and their goals and their health. Um, As for myself, I would say same thing. So if I were to like define it under... Um, like diety things. Um, I eat what I consider like moderate lower carb just because that works for me. So I still mm-hmm. eat lots of carbs. Like I had toast for breakfast, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to a winery, like I get lots, but I find I just feel better on more non-starchy veggies, lots of protein. Okay. Um, and so like a typical breakfast for me is like a frittata. So eggs, lots of veggies, maybe a little cheese on top. Mm-hmm. Um, and then sometimes a piece of toast, sometimes just fruit. 
And then if I look at the other meals, it is often, yeah, like chicken on a big, beautiful salad, or we will like grill up, you know, peppers and onions mm-hmm. and some steaks on the barbecue. Um, so more of our meals are very one plant forward because that's really important no matter what diet works for you. Um, and I find protein for me is really important to steady my energy. So for me, I'm hungry and my energy is tanks mm-hmm. without it because it has a very stabilizing effect on our blood sugar. And so I'm super consistent with that one, which works for me because I love if I may admit it and maybe lose my dietitian card, I love meat. Meat is delicious. Um, you know, and we do our best to find, you know, more local, more sustainably sourced yeah. stuff. But it, it works for me, right? I feel best on that. I also have treats every week. So usually, like, I'll have wine a couple nights. And I'm a big believer in, like, making room for treats. So I eat really well most of the week so that I can have two or three meals where, like, we went to Whistler a couple weeks and, like, I had carbonara for dinner. And you know what? Ooh. It was delicious. And I stressed about it zero percent. Because I know I have room. Um, so that kind of thing, I think, is really key. Um, so I eat all the foods, but generally on a like day-to-day, lots of plants, lots of protein. And then I just kind of move on. Fun is a, a fantastic question. So, I mean, COVID has put a hamper on some of my favorite mm-hmm. fun. But I do ride horses for fun. I have for years. So I ride at a barn that my friends own. Um, and something about animals just like light my heart up and it's like a moving meditation so you have mm-hmm. to show up focused and horses are very sensitive to emotion and energy and Ooh, so when you yes get they on, are you like it just you have to funnel it all away and so for me i enjoy the, the physical exertion of it and it's also a really it's a great mental outlet um and i have a puppy so our other favorite <laughs> for fun is the Loki and i adventure all over so lots of walks lots of hikes um we take him to wineries <laughs> he's a very well known dog in langley as far as going to all the places and so getting outside just makes me happy right it makes everything feel better and so i try to do that almost every day beautiful what type of horses do you ride oh that's a good question um so i ride english and in a style that would be it's it's a venting. It's a very specific sport. So it's jumping, but also some like not jumping, you know, for people who don't um, ride. And most of them are like thoroughbreds or thoroughbred crosses. Um, mm-hmm. I'm an adult. So like I don't ride the crazy ones that I used to. I like to ride the ones who are like retired crazy, right? So they're <laughs> still a little peppy and fun, um, but they're safe. And I won't lose a day of work as a business owner. Man, that's a thing that sits heavily on your brain when you do a higher risk sport. Um, so mostly, you know, thoroughbreds or thoroughbred crosses, um, Love it. a little bit of everything, depending kind of what's on the docket. My coach kind of just gets to choose and <laughs> I get on and live with it most of the time. Well, you sparked my curiosity because I used to ride Tennessee walking horses. So as a kid oh, growing yeah. up, my dad um, had a barn. He had two of these beautiful horses. And from the time we were able to walk, mm-hmm. he put us on them and we were riding them. So you just brought back a sense of nostalgia for me oh, when you mentioned yeah. the horses. And that's why I wanted to know what kind of breed they were, because I'm always, horses are just beautiful. I mean, all animals are beautiful, but horses, yeah. they have this sense of, they can really feel you. You feel your heart, yeah. your, your your spirit, your, you know, that yeah. essence that's coming out of you. And it's just something about that connection that mm-hmm. just allows a person to feel comfortable, right? Yeah, and absolutely. I love the fact that you have a life because, and this is what happens, <laughs> I'm going to say this, <laughs> many of us, great professionals and experts in our field, we love to tell people about what we do. And we're very keen on how to say that. However, I want people to know that you're human, that totally outside can. of what you do, you have a life. You mentioned that you give yourself a day to have your snacks, your treats. And this is going to be so good for the people listening, because if Michelle can do it, then you can do it. And as we mentioned before in the beginning of the segment, there's no perfect approach. And this is why Michelle is here to show you that. You need to take an approach that works for you, but we have to find out what that approach is. You can't do it by yourself because if you could, you would be where you want to be right now. And we all know we can be somewhere better. So Michelle, Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for this wonderful time and being able to help us with learning more about the power of being amazing in our own skin, the power of nutrition. How can our audience get in touch with you to learn more about how to handle their busy lifestyles and merging it with a healthier lifestyle? Oh, that's a, it's a great question. So I think there's two ways. So one, if you just feel like you need a little bit of a, like a dip into it, 
I actually have a totally free like make meal planning easy tutorial. So it's like a video, it's under 15 minutes and there's like a good Great. little resource. So it's the same template I use every week to just kind of make it a little more practical and a little less overwhelming because I feel like often we sit down and planning is super overwhelming without a system. So that's totally free um, and I can send the link to to Adrian to share um, or it's just on my website. So if you go to westcoastnutrition.ca, um, any of the blog posts, the link for that will be at the bottom so you can get in on that and at least just get some ground happening, right? Because sometimes people just need that little bit of a kickstart. Um, mm-hmm. For those of you Absolutely. who go, like as Adrian said, like I need a person on my side to get this done, which is normal. I have a you need Michelle on your side. Like, <laughs> it's okay to need a person on your side, especially as a busy business owner. I do kind of free discovery calls. So it's really important to me that if we work together, because I do longer term approach, so three to six months or more, um, it's a good fit, right? Like you feel comfy, you vibe with what how I do, like I can help you with what your challenge is. And so that call is a chance for us to get to know each other a little more one-on-one, answer any questions, make sure that feels really good. So if you hop over to westcoastnutrition.ca, there should be a little book now button in the top right, and that will you know, take you over to there. You can pick a time. We can actually just sit down and have a like human-to-human chat, which I feel like is so, so valuable before you dive into something like that. Amazing. Thank you so much, Michelle. And what we'll do also is we'll put the link to your video tutorial, Making Meal Planning Easy, in the show notes of this podcast. So when you're done listening to this podcast, everyone, go there and click on that link. and It'll go directly to Michelle's site, and you'll be able to connect with her on that end and also reach out. And I would highly suggest that you do talk to Michelle at some point to find out what can work for you and to get an idea of where you are. Because here's the thing about being in business for yourself and being busy. You cannot see the picture when you are in the frame. Oh, you, you cannot see that picture. So if you're thinking that, hey, I got this, I can do this, I just need to have a little, you know, quick, like watch this video and then go from there, that may get you jump started. However, you still need to speak with someone who specializes in healthier lifestyles because I can attest to this. I have had many moments where I've been so busy and I have gotten completely out of my skin where I yeah. felt uncomfortable. I didn't feel that productive way that I usually am. And when you get back into your own skin, as Michelle has mentioned, and you find what works for you, you get away from the whole taboo about carbs, fats, and calories and start seeing them as nutrition and treating your body like the vehicle that it really is and taking care of it. Oh, the wonders that are going to be waiting for you on the other side of that success door. Michelle, you are absolutely one of a kind. And I am so happy to have you on this show. And we've got to have you back again. I would absolutely love that. And thank you for having me. Nothing makes me more excited than just like chatting about food. So I'm so appreciative. Well, thank you again, Michelle. It was great to have you on the show today. And we look forward to seeing you again. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Purposeful Life Show on the Connect Now podcast with your host, Adrian Starks. Subscribe to the show and connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. Learn more about us by visiting our website at cnbn.ca. Go to connectnowpodcast.com to be inspired by more life-changing content. Let's connect, learn, and grow.